It was 1982 when Burke Lake disc golfer Scott Holter, Dave Steger, and Big Daddy Dave Griffin were looking to add a name to their upcoming tournament. Suddenly, they came across then hole four by the edge of Burke Lake and saw a mother duck nesting inside the basket with her young ducklings. And so the name Duck Golf was born. Since then, this tournament has seen its share of highlights being a Super Tour event and lowlights not even being held as a PDGA sanctioned event. It was Dave Steger who claimed victory that first year in 1982, and to see who will claim victory over a quarter century later, stay tuned as Disc Golf Monthly starts now. to another edition of Disc Golf Monthly. We're in Fairfax, Virginia for the second 25th annual Duck Golf Disc Golf Tournament at Burke Lake Park Disc Golf Course. Matt, looks like it's a great weekend here. It's hot, it's humid. Weather conditions are perfect for playing today. Yes, it is, Cubby, and we have an exciting final nine here uh, to uh, see the, the Open men play a nine-hole final to determine the champion of the second annual 25th annual Duck Golf event. And Matt, last telecast, we covered the grudge match, which is exciting. But now we're back to our traditional format where we're going to follow the top players for nine holes. And Matt, what can we expect today out on the course? Well, unlike uh, the last show that we had where it was a little bit back and forth and the players were even and saw some birdies and mostly parts, we're going to see a lot more birdie opportunities. And uh, definitely these top pros are going to tear up this final nine. And Matt, you've played with a lot of these players, so you know the weapons that they uh, bring to bear on the out on the course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, most of these players have, have already, you know, played at, at Burke Lake numerous times, so they're well versed on how to get through those trees on the tight shots and how to play those temporary holes they have out there for the uh, final nine. And Matt, what do you think the key is to this uh, final nine, nine holes? What's it going to take to win it? Well, it's someone's going to have to get really hot in order to overtake Ian Lindell, who has the lead at this point. They're going to have to get really hot and going to have to shoot at least a five or a six under to catch him. All right, Matt. Well, uh, let's go down and let's check a little bit of history. What is duck golf? How did it get its name? And uh, we'll find out at this segment right here. So here we are again playing the 25th annual duck golf tournament a second time. It's the second time because with last year's event not being PDGA sanctioned, many club members felt it shouldn't count because it lacked the tradition of a tournament that at one time drew the best of the best being a Super Tour event. Anyone who was a major pro at that point was here and uh, Ken was here. Uh, Mike Randolph actually led the tournament most of the time in 95, but at one point Duck Golf on this short course here was uh, one of the major events nationwide, and uh, we drew people from all over the country. John Gregory remembers the days when the champ, Ken Climo, used to play along with other touring pros. I didn't actually watch him play because I was in a couple groups away from him playing alongside him, but that was kind of neat. We had the California guys come. Since 1982, this tournament has always been played at Burke Lake Park, a tight and short course that is very beginner friendly. We asked players, what does a course like this do for beginners to enhance the popularity of this growing sport? It brings out the right players, brings out the, the intermediate people, gives them a chance to have some experience, the birdies, and have fun, and make some long putts, and sometimes even get an ace or two. This is a very popular course uh, as far as the length. We used to have a sign-in box. We got 25,000 people a year who signed in to play. All we asked was for their zip code. And we figured less than 50% actually signed in. So this course supports 50,000 players in a year, which is awesome. You don't have to throw it real far. You do have to learn how to throw it straight quick. Um, other than that, it does help. There's a lot of recreational players out here. The success of this year can be attributed to many leaders in the disc golf community of Northern Virginia, from Tim Barone, Joe Pelchat, Tom Coffin, Tim Haynes, and Matt Butcher, to Jennifer Golden, Ian Liddell, Eric Smith, and Tommy Donaldson. But most of all, the success of this tournament goes to tournament director Andrew Rivers, who not only stepped up to run this event, but also stepped up recently and became the president of the Disc Golf Club of Northern Virginia. We asked players to talk about the spirit of young Andrew Rivers. I think Andy's done a great thing by uh, helping us out by being our president. As an older player, it's nice to see the young guys uh, take a lot of, take some responsibility for the game, and uh, especially our club here. He's done a great job. It means a lot to the whole club. It means a lot to Northern Virginia. The success of this uh, this year's um, 
the golf goes straight to Andrew Rivers and the and uh, Pelchat, Jill Pochat, Pelchat, Eric Smith, Ian Liddell. These guys all put in effort to make this a, a wonderful tournament. Hawk Hollow course owner John Bisco had the most compelling words to say about Andrew as he points out what people like Andrew are doing for the future of the sport of disc golf. People like Andrew are just such a benefit to everyone involved in the sport. He's not only stepped up in an organizational sense, but he and Sheila are so generous to people who are just starting the sport and teaching them and all of that. He has definitely, you know, progressed beyond his years as a as a, as an organizer in the sport. We spoke with Andrew about what it was that inspired him to run this event. And what goals does he and the club have for the future of the event? Basically, what inspired me to run the event was uh, I picked up his club president uh, exactly a year ago today. Um, and Duck Golf last, last year wasn't sanctioned, and a lot of club members um, really enjoy having a sanctioned event to go to. Um, so I decided I would kind of pick it up and get it sanctioned again and get some added cash and all that extra stuff that goes on with running a, a big tournament. But we're trying to get back in the old Dominion Disc Series. It's called the Odd Series. It's kind of the premier tour in um, Virginia. It's like 10 events spread across Virginia. And previously, Duck Golf has always been in those tournaments. Um, Duck Golf used to be an A tier, a super tour event. Um, and we're trying to, we're actually just trying to keep it kind of a C tier, a local event. Um, it's hard to host that many players at this course because it's slightly busy. Um, and we're just trying to keep it, keep it going and keep it a C tier and try to get it back into the odd series. We congratulate Andrew Rivers for stepping up to run this summer classic event. And good luck to the club in getting Duck Golf included in the ODD series once again. And now, it's time to help improve your game as we share this month's What About This Golf segment. Hello, I'm Lewis Graniger, and I'd like to demonstrate to you a unique tomahawk putt. Tomahawk putt can be thrown with two fingers underneath the disc. And then what you want to do is you want to come up, come up, and release it. on a hillside and you don't want the disc to go away. Well, Matt, that's duck golf. That's what it's all about. And that was quite a hammer putt demo. I've tried all kinds of putts. I'm, I'm going to have to see if that'll do something for my game, Matt. Yeah, Lewis really uh, put on quite a show there. And he's been doing that for 20 plus years that I've known him. And uh, he's always found a different way to get the biscuit in the basket. And it's not a bad deal at all. All right, Matt, on to the business of this final nine. We're following the open men players. Tell us a little bit about the players that we're going to be following today. Well, first off, today we're going to be following Tony Ellis. Uh, he's taken 18th at the Pittsburgh Flying Disc Open, 17th at the uh, Virginia Open, and he took first place at the Timber Ridge Open. Next, we have John Gregory, who's taken 15th this year at the L'Oreal Challenge. Then we have Ian Liddell. He's taken first at the Shenandoah Shag, 5th at the Virginia Open, and sixth at the Rob Byrne Rumble. And last, we have Eric Smith, who's taken 18th at the Pittsburgh Flying Disc Open, and second at the Shenandoah Shag. 